blessed day, Church. Welcome to our Living with a Purpose series. Now today, we will be continuing in our journey of discovering the five purposes of God. And we are now embarking to the first purpose. It's called worship. We are now in our part three of the this in discovering worship. What is worship and how we can worship the Lord with all our hearts? Now, as we begin our message, allow me to open this with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this beautiful day that you have gathered together your people. Thank you, O God, that we have this one heart to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, allow your Holy Spirit to be our greatest teacher today. And Lord, we pray that we will continue to become like Christ as we continue to discover your word and follow him. Lord, we want to offer this time to you now. This is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, we are now in our part three, and the title of our message today is The Heart of Worship. I don't want you to miss out the last two sessions of this discovery, Plan for God's Pleasure and What Makes God Smile. That's the message last week. And if you want to review it, you can check out our Ictus Dumaguete Facebook page and also our YouTube channel, Ictus Dumaguete. Now, church, let's come now and dig into the heart of worship. It says in Romans chapter 6, verse 13, Give yourselves to God, surrender your whole being to Him to be used for righteous purposes. What does it mean for us? The heart of worship, beloved, is the word surrender. It says in Romans 6, 13, Give yourselves to God. That's surrender. And then it says surrender your whole being. The word is whole, not part, not 10%, not 50%, but your entire being for what? To be used for righteous purposes. Therefore, beloved, today we'll be embarking to a discovery of how we can be at the heart of worship as we continue to follow God. And it says here, we've got to surrender. You know, but surrendering to God is the heart of worship. It is the natural response to God's amazing love and mercy. We give ourselves to Him, not out of fear or duty, but in love. For the Word of God says, because He first loved us. Beloved, surrender is an unpopular word, disliked almost as much as the word submission. It implies losing, and no one wants to be a loser. Surrender evokes the unpleasant images of admitting defeat in battle, forfeiting a game, or yielding to a stronger opponent. The word is almost always used in a negative context. Captured criminals surrender to authorities, for example. Beloved, in today's competitive culture, we are taught to never give up and never give in, so we don't hear much about surrendering. If winning is everything, surrendering is unthinkable. We would rather talk about winning, succeeding, overcoming, and conquering than yielding, submitting, obeying, and surrendering. Beloved, I pray that all of us will understand today that there is true victory upon surrendering ourselves to God. Remember that offering yourselves to God is what worship is all about. We've talked about this from the past two Sundays that we talk about that worship is beyond a worship gathering, a worship service. Worship is beyond the music that we hear, that we sing. Music is part in expressing our worship to the Lord. Being together with other believers is part of expression of worshiping upon our living God. But remember this, offering yourself to God is what worship is all about. It means that we have that heart to say to the Lord, Lord, my life is yours, 100%, not just part of it. You know, after spending 11 chapters of the book of Romans explaining God's incredible grace to us, Paul urges us to fully surrender our lives to God in worship. If you will discover the book of Romans, it's, re it's giving us the, the, the emphasis of grace and truth in terms of Romans chapter 1 to 11. But when we jump into Romans chapter 12, it talks about now that you understand grace, now that you understand the truth about who God is and who we are, that we are being loved by God, that we also receive the grace of God, now beloved, this is God's call in chapter 12 in the book of Romans. 
So then, my friends, because of God's great mercy to us, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to His service and pleasing to Him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Beloved, true worship or bringing God pleasure happens when you give yourself completely to God. Now notice, the first and the last words of that verse are the same. The word is offer. Now this act of personal surrender is called in many things like consecration, making Jesus your Lord, taking up your cross, dying to self, yielding to the Spirit. What matters is that you do it, not what you call it. God wants your life, all of it. 95% is not enough. God is calling us and challenging us that if we really want to make Him as our King, as our Lord, as our God, we've got to be all out to Him 100%. So beloved, I hope that as we journey in this purpose-driven series that we have through the book Purpose Driven Life by Pastor Rick Warren, it's my prayer that we can cultivate that realization and reflection that if we really want to worship the Lord, it's not about how loud your singing is. It's not about how skillful you are in playing your instrument. It's not about how high you jump during a worship song. It's about your heart being all out to Him. Beloved, I pray that starting today, we understand one thing, offering yourself to God is what worship is all about. Beloved, there's a question. Why it's hard to totally surrender to God? If surrendering to God is the all-out meaning of worship, but the real question is this, why is it so hard to surrender our lives to God? Now, let me share to you three of the most major barriers in terms of why it's hard to surrender or why is it that it's so hard to give out a hundred percent of my life number one beloved is this it is so hard to surrender to god because of fear we'll be expounding all of this three today now what does it mean fear we don't realize how much god loves us the moment that we have so much fear in our hearts it means one thing we have a lot of things in our life that we need to dealt with or maybe we need to discover even more about the love of God. Number two, pride. We want to control our own lives. It means that because of pride, we cannot let go, we cannot surrender because we want to control people or situation or things that we have in our vicinity or in our area, in our control. And number three, beloved, is this. We call it confusion. Why it's so hard to totally surrender to God? Because sometimes we are being confused in the word surrender. We misunderstand the real meaning of surrender. So be, bear with me as we discover these three. We will be expounding these three barriers that we have today because probably you have the desire to really grow in the Lord. You have the desire to really follow the Lord. You really have the desire to be in love and be soaked in intimate relationship with the Lord. And probably right now you're in a season where you don't know why it, you cannot totally surrender your life to Him. You cannot totally surrender your trust to Him. And I pray that the Lord will speak to each one's lives today as we discover these three hard, tough barriers why we cannot totally surrender our lives to God. And it is my prayer that today we can have a breakthrough that all of us will totally let go and let God work over and in and through our lives. So beloved, let's discover the first barrier, the barrier of fear. Can I trust God? You know, trust is an essential ingredient to surrender. You won't surrender to God unless you trust Him. But you can trust Him until you know Him better. Remember that, beloved. It's all about relationship. Everything started with relationship. It, it will be so hard for you to surrender if your trust is not full. And the only way that your trust will be solidified, you need to build an intimate relationship with God. That is why that night, there are many, many times in our life that God wants us to do a certain calling or a certain purpose, a certain conviction. But sometimes we have a lot of reason why we cannot do it and we struggle with obedience. That because we struggle with surrender and because we struggle with trust. And the bottom line, because we don't build up 
that intimate relationship with Him. That is why today we are being reminded, beloved, we need to build deep in intimacy, in, in, in an intimate relationship with God if we want to totally trust Him that will bear fruit to totally surrendering to Him and that will bear fruit to intentionally obeying Him whatever, wherever, whoever, however. That's why we can have the joy of obeying the Lord. So beloved, remember that fear keeps us from surrendering. But love casts out all fear. Hallelujah. The more you realize how much God loves you, the easier surrender becomes. Always remember that we always experience this together with our loved ones. For those who, are, who have husband or wife, during the time that you surrender yourselves to marriage, no matter how difficult it might be in the process of you know, preparing for your marriage for that wedding day, but you surrender everything. Why? Because of the word love. And love casts out all fear. And that's also the calling that God wants for you and me. That we will soak ourselves in intimacy with Him. Build up in, in that intimate relationship with Him. So that all the fears of totally surrendering our lives to God, we can have the love of God to become our peace. Beloved, the greatest expression of, that, of this sacrifice is who? Jesus Christ. It's always about Jesus. Romans 5, 8, it says, God proves His love for us. That while we still were sinners, what did Jesus do? He died for you and me. Beloved, how do you know God loves you? He gives you many evidences. God says, He loves you. You're never out of His sight. He cares about every detail of your life. He gives you the capacity to enjoy all kinds of pleasure. He has good plans for your life. He forgives you and He is lovingly patient with you. God loves you infinitely more than you can imagine. Now, beloved, the greatest expression, it is God Himself who gives us that beautiful example of how much He loves us as His children. If you want to know how much you matter to God, look at Christ. With His arms outstretched, carrying that cross, He's saying, I love you this much. I'd rather die than live without you. God is not a cruel slave driver or a bully who uses brute force to coerce us into submission. He doesn't try to break our will but woos us to Himself so that we might offer ourselves freely to Him. God is a lover and a liberator, and, and surrendering to Him brings freedom, not bondage. When we completely surrender ourselves to Jesus, we discover that He is not a tyrant, but a savior, not a boss, but a brother, not a dictator, but a friend, a best friend. So beloved, I hope and pray, if you have that question in your heart, can you trust God in the season that you are in right now? Remember, you have a Savior, you have a friend, you have a brother in Jesus Christ. So beloved, cast away that barrier in your life. Let go of it so that you can experience the more, all the more God's love for you. Even in whatever season you are in right now, you can see that He is providing for you, protecting you, caring for you, and his presence is leading you to His wonderful plans and purposes. So, let's be warned about the first barrier. It's called fear. Now, the second one is what we call pride. And all we need to do, beloved, when talk about when we're facing our pride is we need to admit our limitations. So, beloved, a second barrier to total surrender is really our pride. Remember that we don't want to admit that we're just creatures and not in charge of everything. It is the oldest temptation going back to Adam and Eve with the serpent tempt tempting them. It's, this is what the serpent says. You'll be like God. That is the greatest temptation. That's why they fall. Now, the reason why many are still troubled, still seeking, still making little forward progress is because they haven't yet come to end of themselves. We're still trying to give orders and interfering with God's work with us. That is A.W. Tozer's quote. Beloved, life is a struggle, but most people don't realize is that our struggle, like Jacob's, 
is really a struggle with God. It's not a struggle within us, nor a situation, nor any other relationship. But the real struggle that we have is a struggle with God. And there's no way we are going to win in this struggle, beloved. Now, we aren't God and never will be. We are humans. It is when we try to be God that we end up most like Satan, who desired the same thing. We accept our humanity intellectually, but not emotionally. When faced with our own limitations, we react with irritations, we react with anger, we react with resentment. We want to be taller or shorter, smarter, stronger, more talented, more beautiful, you know, more wealthier. We want to have it all and do it all. And we become upset when it doesn't happen. Then when we notice that God gave other characteristics we don't have, we respond with envy, jealousy, and self-pity. That is why it's very important for us, just like in the quote of A.W. Tozer, we need to go back. We need to understand that we need to go back to that self-mirroring or self-reflection that we need to admit that we have limitations, but we are being created uniquely in the image of God. So beloved, that's the second barrier. We need to understand that we have limitations. And number three, beloved, the barrier number three is this. What it means to surrender. Sometimes we have this confusion. What is surrender? It might be easy for us to hear from a brother or a sister in the, in the faith that every time we share our, our problems, our challenges, they will just simply say to us, oh, you just surrender to the Lord and He will do it for you. But sometimes we need to really be founded what is surrender. Because always remember this, beloved, the heart of worship is surrender. It's not how good is a music is. It's not about how good is the gathering, the service is. It's about between you and the Lord. Whether you are in a corporate worship service or you are alone, whether you are singing or not, whether you are reading the Bible or prayer, always remember this. The heart of worship is surrender. That is why a lot of Christians are struggling in their spiritual walk, in their spiritual growth, because first and foremost, the requirement is surrender, but they don't really understand what is surrender. They thought it, surrender is just surrender your sin. They thought that surrender is just surrender your wicked ways. They thought that surrender is just about doing new practices or spiritual discipline. Beloved, remember this. Today, we will be discovering what it means to surrender because this is far away from the things that we do externally like serving in the church like doing mission it is so far far away those things are good and result of surrender but that is not the heart of surrender that the heart of surrender is these things let me share to you four major definition what is biblical surrender is all about so that when the Lord says to you, my son, my daughter, my child, surrender your life to me, then we can remember this as well. So number one, beloved, is this. Surrendering to God is not passive resignation or fatalism or an excuse for laziness. Remember, it is not accepting the status quo. It may mean the exact opposite, sacrificing your life or suffering in order to change what needs to be changed. God often calls surrendered people to do battle on His behalf. Remember that surrendering is not for coward dormants. Likewise, it does not mean giving up rational thinking. God would not waste the mind He gave you. God does not want robots to serve Him. So beloved, remember the very first thing that we need to understand, surrendering is not about laziness or resignation or fatalism, but surrender is an all-out commitment to stand for what God wants you to do and what God wants you to believe according to His Scripture. So number two, what is surrender? So that we will not be confused anymore. Number two, beloved, is this. Surrendering is not repressing your personality. All right? not repressing your personality. God wants to use your unique personality. Rather than it's being diminished, surrendering enhances it. You know, C.S. Lewis observed, and I quote, he said this, the more we let God take us over, 
the more truly ourselves we become because He made us. He invented all the different people that you and I were intended to be. It is when I turn to Christ when I give up myself to His personality then that I first begin to have a real personality of my own. So we need to give up first our own personality because we are being made differently. And the moment we surrender or give up our personality to Christ and we embrace and we suit in Christ-likeness in our life, then that's actually the beginning of a real personality of our own, Christ-likeness. So beloved, Remember that surrendering is not repressing your personality, but surrendering it to the Lord. Lord, these are my, my good side, my bad side. These are the things that I'm still developing at this time. These are the things that I am championing in my life right now. But Lord, starting today, I want to surrender it to you and I want to allow the Holy Spirit to work in my character, in my personality, so that Christ may reign and be seen in my life. Christ-likeness is our ultimate goal. Beloved, number three, always remember that surrendering is best demonstrated in obedience. Again, this is one of the tough one. Surrendering is, the best, is best demonstrated in obedience. So surrendering, the heart of worship is surrendering and the meaning of surrender, one of the major meaning of it is obey, obedience, obeying the Lord. So what does it mean for us, beloved? You say, yes, Lord, to whatever He asks of you. That's what it means, obedience. Yes, Lord. To say no, Lord, okay? No, Lord, I don't want to do it, is to speak a contradiction. You can call Jesus your Lord when you refuse to obey Him. After a night of failed fishing, if you will look at again, in the story, in, in, in Luke chapter 5, verse 5, it says, After a night of failed fishing, Simon modeled surrender when Jesus told him to try again. Luke 5, 5 says, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. It means it's so impossible. Remember, context here is they are really great fishermen. They know the timing. They know what, what hour of the night or day. They know in what place. But during this time, they are being challenged to simply obey. And we know the effect. They don't get any fish at night, but when they just obey the Lord, because of their heart, when they say, because you say so, I will let down the net. Because of that simple obedience, it brings breakthrough. And we know the story, the miracle of the catch of fish. R beloved, surrendered people obey God's word, even if it doesn't make sense. Many, many times in my personal life, as I obey the Lord, that after a long haul, that's the time I realize what's the real meaning and purpose of why God wants me to do that certain thing in my personal life and even in the ministry. It's not about figuring everything out or being in advance in envisioning what will happen. It's simply as obeying the Lord what He wants you to do today. And that's the key of a breakthrough in our life. Beloved, let me ask you that question today. Is there anything that God wants you to do just today? Or maybe last week, God is convicting you to do this. But we have that barrier of we don't understand really what is surrender. That surrender is actually obeying the Lord. And if we want to worship the Lord, we're going to surrender. We're going to obey Him. Beloved, let me ask you that question. What is that one thing in your life right now that the Lord is speaking to you? That He wants you to obey in a specific way? situation in a specific location or probably in a specific relationship it might be about your home it might be about your business your your career your ministry your discipleship beloved you don't need to figure out all things god is just looking at your heart he wants you to just step out by faith even in that one faith step of faith so beloved i hope that all of us will start to develop that faith and the trust in Him. That is why the last part is, if you want to know what is surrender, total surrender is total trust. You cannot have total surrender with 50% of trust. It will always be how big is your trust, then that's how big is your surrender. Now, how are you going to know that your trust is big? How are you going to develop a stronger trust in the Lord, 
more faith in the Lord is to develop an intimate relationship with Him. There's no shortcut. You need to go back to your journal. You need to go back in meditating the Word of God. You need to go back in praying to Him. You need to go back in putting and developing a foundation of intimate relationship. The moment that you can experience in your life that you are so in love with the Lord that you don't want to be away in His presence. That you can experience the beauty and the joy of just loving Him. And trust will be easy, surrender will be easy, and worship is flowing. Beloved, remember, worshiping the Lord is not about what is in the external, then putting it to your feeling in your heart inside. Remember, it's the outflow of your heart. You know, many, many times, especially right now that we are in missional communities, we, we've been in a trip last, uh, last uh, month of April to Bacolod uh, to expose ourselves, to immerse ourselves in different contexts of missional communities. And that's one thing that I realized in my heart. The true worship is not about, oh, we have this wonderful, wow, studio-based kind of worship center, and then we can worship the Lord with good singing and preaching. Those, are, those things are really good. But when we have the two trips last month of April to Bacolod, and we immerse ourselves to different types of missional communities, the passion that they have before that they're worshiping in a big wow kind of worship center is the same passion that they shared when they gathered in a calendaria, when they gathered in under the tree, when they gathered in a home, when they gathered in a business establishment, when they gathered in offices, when they gathered just in the garage of a house. The same heart. Why? Because remember this, beloved. Total trust defines our surrender. And total surrender defines our worship. And again, worship goes back to the all out of our being in our intimate relationship. Beloved, if you are in the maturity or if you desire to grow mature in the Lord, I hope that you're going to see it from the inside out response in whatever you're doing no matter you're in a very comfortable situation or you are getting out in your comfort zone in obeying the Lord, I pray that you're gonna step out in faith. Build that personal relationship with God so that your trust will be developed and the moment your trust is being developed, surrender will be easy and worship will be flowing. So beloved, I pray that all of us, total surrender is total trust. You know, if you will look at again in the Bible, Abraham followed God's leading without knowing where it would take him. Hannah waited for God's perfect timing without knowing when. Ma Mary expected a miracle without knowing how. Joseph trusted God's purpose without knowing why circumstances happened the way they did. Each of these people, beloved, were fully surrendered to God. Are you in a situation right now in your season or in your life where you don't know what's next, but you need to make a decision? Beloved, surrender to God. Trust Him. Build that intimate relationship with Him. And whatever He revealed, whatever He showed you, obey it. And you will never fail because you're obeying the Lord, the God who guide you, who provide and protect you. He is a faithful God, beloved. So I hope that today we acknowledge this meaning of surrender, a deeper meaning than just, you know, let go, let God and surrender everything to the Lord. But beloved, it talks about building, surrender means building that core intimate relationship with God that will result into full trust in Him and then that will result to total surrender and it will result to worship. So it means it's from the inside out. It's not circumstantial outside, and then feeling it inside. No, it comes from the inside no matter the situation outside. It's what we call worship from the inside out. Beloved, I want you to remember this. Your surrender to God when you relied on God to work things out instead of trying to manipulate others. Force your agenda and control situation. You let go and let God work. You don't have to always be in charge. Remind yourself, beloved, I don't need to be totally every day, 24-7, be in charge. God is at work and God is in charge. In Psalms 37 verse 7, it says, Surrender yourself to the Lord and wait 
patiently for Him. So remember, first, surrender yourself, your entire being to the Lord, and then develop a heart that waits upon Him, that trusting Him, that surrendering to Him, putting your hope in Him, and then develop that patience. Develop that patience, that endurance, that perseverance, that you will never move until God says. And if when God says, you will surely move. Remember that as we continue in the life that God has given us, we need to understand God often calls surrendered people to do battle on His behalf. Remember that surrendering is not for the cowards. Remember that. And surrendering will always lead you. If you're in a battle, it will lead you to victory. All you need to do, beloved, is surrender yourself to the Lord and just wait patiently upon Him and surely God will be at work in your life. So, beloved, you might be asking, who's the greatest example in the Bible about surrender? There's no other person. It's in the name of Jesus. The supreme example of surrender. That is why if you're struggling with surrendering, probably you don't understand your commitment to follow Jesus. God says, follow me in all ways. Not only when I do miracles, not only when I teach good, good news, but also follow me when I'm persecuted, follow me when I carried my cross, follow me even to the hardest kind of will, plan, or purposes that our Heavenly Father is giving us. That is what it means to really follow Him. Beloved, the supreme example of self-surrender is Jesus. The night before His crucifixion, Jesus surrendered Himself to God's plan. Is He struggling during that time? Yes. Is He in trouble during that time? Yes. He weep in blood. It means He's really struggling, but this is His response. And I hope and pray that all of us will be reminded. Beloved, today, if you have some areas in your, in your life, in your heart, where you are struggling in obeying, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus' example. Because this is really an important reminder for all of us as His follower. If you are truly a disciple of Jesus, if you are truly become a son of God, a child of God, because of that relationship with Jesus Christ, we should remember ourselves. We should be reminded about this truth, about this example of Jesus. That even in the hardest part in His life here on earth, he has conquered everything, but this is one of the most hardest obedience call, obedience test that the Abba Father has bring to His one and only Son. This is so hard, beloved, but look at the, the example of Jesus. What does He say? Father, this is His prayer. Father, everything is possible for you. He know it. In a, in a snap of an eye, Everything can change. He acknowledged the power of God in his life. He is the Son of God. He acknowledged it. And he pleaded, please take this cup of suffering away from me. He knew the power of God and he pleaded before God, but look at the heart of Jesus. Yet, I want your will. It means that he makes God's will over than his pleasure, over than his comfort, over than what can make his life feel good in this earth. He wants to make it that yet I want your will. It means he wants to please God. He wants to worship God. Beloved, you cannot do that if you don't have the heart of worship. You cannot do that if you don't surrender. You don't have that full surrender upon him. You cannot do that if you don't trust completely the Lord with all your heart. You cannot do that if you don't have that agenda in your life to worship, to please God with all your heart. But look at Christ. Our King, our Lord, our Savior. If you're struggling in going out in your comfort zone right now, if you're struggling with releasing yourself from the trap of sin in your life, look at Jesus, the one who saved you, the one who died for you even though you are a sinner. Now that we have this personal relationship with Him, build that relationship with this intentionality. Look at the text, beloved. He, Jesus acknowledged the power of God. Anytime, everything can change. He's a powerful God. He knew that. And then he acknowledged that he pleaded God. It's not because that he is the son of God and everything could just do, do away and be smooth in the, in the miracles that probably God will change his mind, but he pleaded, Lord. But at the end, beloved, I really you know, love this verse. Yet I want your will, not mine. 
in my personal life as a pastor, and even in my personal life as I journey with the Lord, we have, I always encounter a lot of impossible situation, impossible things, impossible, impossible calling from the Lord, even visions that He gave to me as I move forward. And I struggle with that. And I plead before the Lord to make it easy as well. And I know that God can do that, but I will always go back to this. Every time, beloved, that I can experience hardship and a moment where I, I want to give up, I don't want it anymore, I will always go back to Christ because it refuels me. And it will remind me, whom am I following? Am I following a person? Am I following someone who is in a higher authority than me? Am I, is my walk with God is depending upon other people that if they will go, then I will go. If they not, I will not. I will always fix my eyes upon Jesus because I know it is Jesus who can give me the breakthrough. I know that in my life, Jesus is the one who can give me victory. I know that Jesus is the one who will lead me through. Beloved, I pray that in your walk with the Lord today, don't depend to anyone, even to yourself, because you are directly accountable to the Lord. It is Jesus that you have accepted. It is Jesus that you say, Lord, you are my Lord, you are my Savior. But the real question today is, what if discomfort comes in in following Christ? What if getting out from your comfort zone means following Christ? Are you willing to let go and to surrender? Beloved, I pray that all of us we'll have the same prayer like Jesus, that when those seasons comes into our life, we can acknowledge the power of God, we can plead before God, but at the end, we surrender upon His will. Yet, I want your will, not mine. Amen? So, beloved, it is my prayer that all of us can discover the beauty of God's power to work upon us and through us. Now, we all know that when you obey, when you surrender, there's blessing. Amen? The Bible is crystal clear about how you benefit when you fully surrender your life to God. So three major things that you can experience as you step out in your comfort zone and as you step in into God's calling in your life, how He's going to bless you. First, He will give you peace. He will give you that extraordinary peace that even though your circumstances and the things that's happening in your life is so chaotic, but deep inside, you are sharp, focused, and peaceful between you and the Lord. Number two, He gives you freedom. It means that He freed you from any worries. He freed you from any fear. That is why in the Bible, it says, Offer yourselves to the ways of God, and the freedom never quits. His commands set you free to live openly in His freedom. It means, beloved, that there's so much freedom. It will not entangle you when you are in God's calling, when you're responding to it, when you're obeying it, but rather, it will give you even more freedom and the joy will be there. So if there's peace, there's freedom, what will happen to our hearts? There will be joy, even in the midst of storms in life. And lastly, beloved, God's power at work. You can really see it. You can really experience it. You can personally witness the goodness and the faithfulness of God over your life. Many people love to experience God's power, God's miracle at work. But sad to say, they cannot experience it because they don't surrender to the Lord. Maybe they surrendered 80%, but not the entire life that God required. That is why God is giving us this invitation today. And also, William Booth says, The greatness of a man's power is in the measure of his surrender. The more you surrender, the more you will experience the power of God working in your life. So, beloved, I hope that all of us has now this grasp of what is really surrender, overall and in all. If you look at again in the book of Joshua chapter 6, when talking about God's power at work, Yes, we know, stubborn temptations and overwhelming problems can be defeated by Christ when we give it to Him. In Joshua 6, if you look at the text, as Joshua approached the biggest battle of his life, you know this battle? As Joshua approached the biggest battle, he, he encountered God, fell in worship before Him, and surrendered to His plan. That surrender led to a stunning victory at Jericho. Now, this is the paradox. Victory comes through surrender. 
Surrender doesn't weaken you, it strengthens you. Surrendered to God, you don't have a fear to fear or surrender to anything else. And remember, beloved, that the real greatness comes not in our own capacity, but when all our capacity and ability and everything that we've got, we surrender it all back to God. And when we see that God is at work. So, beloved, surrendered people are the ones God uses. Yes, indeed. You might have a heart to serve the Lord. You might have a heart to please the Lord. But remember this. It is only those who are surrendered that the Lord will be using. Remember that God chose Mary to be the mother of Jesus. Not because she was talented or wealthy or beautiful, but because she was totally surrendered to Him. When the angel explained God's improbable plan, she calmly responded. What is Mary's response? I am the Lord's servant. He acknowledged who, what is his identity. He doesn't give in to the identity that the world is giving her during that time, but the identity of I am the Lord's servant. That is his identity. And he said this, and I am willing to accept whatever he wants. Beloved, nothing is more powerful than a surrendered life in the hands of God. So give yourselves completely to Him alone. So, beloved, surrender is not the best way to live. It is the only way to live. Nothing else works. If right now you are discovering or searching for what is the best way to live, there's no other way, beloved, but to surrender everything to Him. The best way to live, everybody eventually surrender to something or someone. If not to God, you will surrender to the opinions or expectation of others, to money, to resentment, to fear, or to your own pride, or lust, or ego. You were designed to worship God, and if you fail to worship Him, you know what will happen? You will create other things, we call it idols, to give your life to. Now, you are free to choose what you surrender to, but you are not free from the consequences of that choice. You know, E. Stanley Jones said, if you don't surrender to Christ, you surrender to chaos. I want you to remember that, beloved. If you don't surrender to Christ, it means you surrender to the world. You are giving in to the world. And remember that if you need peace, it's only in Christ and the world brings chaos. So, beloved, nothing else works. All other approaches leads to frustration, disappointment, and self-destruction. The King James Version calls surrender your reasonable service. Another version translates the most sensible way to serve God. You know, surrendering your life is not a foolish emotional impulse, but a rational, intelligent act. The most responsible and sensible thing you can do with your life. That is why Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, so we make it our goal to please Him. Beloved, your wisest moments will be those when you say yes to God. And I really love that song, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. I pray that we can have that song in our heart, that whatever God wants us to do, whatever God wants us to be, we can just say yes, Lord. Not yes, Lord, because we are in bondage with responsibility or duty, but we say yes, Lord, because we understand we have a close relationship with God. We are fully trusting Him and we are surrendering our lives to Him because we want to worship Him with all our heart. Amen? So, beloved, I pray that all of us can live a surrendered life. Now, sometimes it takes years, but eventually you discover that the greatest hindrance to God's blessing in your life is not others. It is yourself, your self-will, stubborn pride and personal ambition. You cannot fulfill God's purposes for your life while focusing on your own plans. If God is going to do His deepest work in you, it will begin with living a surrendered life. Beloved, I hope that all of us, we can always be reminded about living a surrendered life. This is not just a one-time act. This is not just a one-time surrender. But every day, we need to remember every hour, every decision we make, every plan that we make, we need to pray like Jesus, not my will, but your will. I want your will. Desire God's will. 
I believe that it's quite the opposite when we talk about the desires. That if we desire more of God, it will be the anti of this world. And if we desire more of, the, of this world, it will be the anti of what God wants for me. But we need to choose a side. And remember that we are not, we are not permanent upon this world. We are just pass by here. In the Bible, we are called foreigners. We are called pilgrimage. We are in a journey. This is temporary. This is just the rehearsal of the real life that we will have in eternity. That is why, beloved, God is giving us that reminder, living a surrendered life, developing that intimate relationship with Him, trusting Him completely, surrendering to His will. I want your will, not my will. And then worship will wrap it all. Beloved, let's answer this question today. Okay, we understand it. I need to live a surrendered life. So, the question is, how to live a surrendered life? There are three things that I want to leave with you today to ponder upon. How to live a surrendered life. Number one, beloved, is this. Give it all to God. Your past regrets, your present problems, your future ambitions, your fears, your dreams, your weaknesses, your habits, your hurts, your hang-ups. Starting today, beloved, if you want to worship the Lord, if you want to surrender your life to Him, Start giving it all to God. You cannot solve it, but God can. And He wants you to witness that He can work in you and through you, His power and His miracles. Number two, beloved, put Jesus Christ in the driver's seat. In the driver's seat of your life and take your hands off the steering wheel. Beloved, remember that in the life that God has given us, we are not the drivers. We are actually the vehicles and we need to let God do the steering for us. Remember, He is our Creator. We are not the intelligent person who invented life. He is the one who creates life and put meaning and purpose upon it. So therefore, there's no way that you can discover your purpose and plan within yourself. You need God to take a helm, to take over in the steering wheel. Let Him drive your life as you trust Him and journey with Him and walk with Him to have that closer relationship, then in every mile, you can surrender upon His care. Then lastly, beloved, don't be afraid. Nothing under His control can ever be out of control. Even the worst sickness, even the worst accident or tragedy, He is in control. Beloved, remember that mastered by Christ, you can handle anything. You can because of Him. You will be like Paul. When he said, I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. That is, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficient, sufficiency. It's in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. You know, in, in the book of Philippians, especially specifically in this verse, Paul's moment of surrender occurred on Damascus, road after he was knocked down by a blinding light. For others, God gets our attention with less drastic methods. Regardless, surrendering is never just a one-time event. Paul said, I die daily. There is a moment of surrender and there is the practice of surrender, which is moment by moment and lifelong. It's always a reminder. The problem with a living sacrifice is that it can crawl off the altar. So you, so you may have to surrender your life 50 times a day. You must make it a daily habit. Jesus said, if people want to follow me, they must give up the things they want, the desirable things of this world. They must be willing to give up their lives daily to follow me. Luke 9.23 Beloved, again, surrendering to God is not just a one-time act. It must be done daily. We need to die to self daily. I believe all of us have many good, good plans for this world, many great, great desires. But remember this, even the greatest and the good plans and desires that we have, we've got to die upon ourselves. If you really want to worship the Lord, if you really want to follow Him, again, it's the Bible who clearly says that. And surrender is not the best way to live. It is the only way to live and nothing else work, beloved. So as we close today, we understand now the importance and the meaning of surrender. Now we know how to live a surrendered life. These three major things, give it all to God. Put Jesus Christ in the driver's seat. Let Him take the wheel. 
And then don't be afraid. But there is a great warning. You might be so all out right now. Yes, I want to surrender my life. I want Jesus in my life. I want to surrender everything to Him now. If that's your heart, beloved, praise the Lord. But this is my warning. When you decide to live a totally surrendered life, that decision will be tested. Even right now. You will be tested. Sometimes it will mean doing inconvenient, unpopular costly or seemingly impossible task. It will often mean doing the opposite of what you feel like doing. But here's my encouragement. Always fix your heart upon Jesus. Go back to the central anchor in whatever God wants you to do, whether it's inconvenient, unpopular, costly. Don't look at other people. Don't, don't compare yourself towards other people but rather fix your heart upon Christ, fix your eyes upon Him alone. Remember, all of us are in different journey. That is why God wants us to really, to really desire for more of Christ in our life. Beloved, let me warn you with that and my prayer, encouragement as well, fix your heart upon Jesus. One of the great Christian leaders of the 20th century was Bill Bright the founder of Campus Crusade for Christ. So through crusade staff around the world, the four spiritual laws trap and the Jesus film seen, seen by over 4 billion people and more than 150 million people have come to Christ and will spend eternity in heaven. Praise God for that. You know, there's a time in the, in the book of Pastor Rick Warren and this is one of his story. Pastor Rick asked Bill, why did God use and bless your life so much? And Bill said, when I was a young man, I made a contract with God. I literally wrote it out and signed my name at the bottom. It said, From this day forward, I am a slave of Jesus Christ. Wow! I am a slave of Jesus Christ. Beloved, let me also ask you that question today. Have you ever signed a contract like that with God? I am a slave of Christ. Or are you still at that point where you want to be served by other people? You still want to get what, what, what can we get from this kind of ministry or what kind of church or what of this kind of program? Are we, are, do we have that contract with God now that Lord starting today, I want to become a slave of Christ, nothing else? Now, or are you still arguing and struggling with God over His right to do with your life as He please? Now is your time to surrender, beloved. Remember, God's grace is there. God's love is there. His mercy, His forgiveness is there. That we might be so far away from the Lord, from our life here on earth, for, from the past days, months, years. But today, God is giving you a great invitation. Will you make God as your Lord and Savior? Will you make Jesus as your King and Master of all things, on all areas in your life? So, beloved, I pray that today we can make that commitment together. I want to journey with you. Let's have that commitment patiently. Yes, in our season right now, especially in Ictus Dumaguete, there might be a lot of inconvenient, unpopular, costly, or seemingly impossible tasks that we're doing. But please, beloved, hold on to that. Hold on to your faith. And let's journey together. And soon we can see the breakthrough that God wants from all of us. Beloved, for our D-group discussion, let me share this with you. Point to ponder, the heart of worship is surrender. Then verse to remember, surrender your whole being to Him to be used for righteous purposes. And a question to consider as you share, what area of my life am I holding back from God at this very moment? I hope that you can encourage one another and pray for one another and walk together as a family as one missional community, as one body of Christ, as a one church, I pray that by the grace, mercy, and love of God, we can experience the beauty of His power that will work through us, in us, and for us. Now, church, let's bow down our head and let us pray. Before I will close in a word of prayer, if you feel like so convicted by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, to surrender everything right now in His presence. I want you, and I encourage you, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. 
Just say this prayer verbally. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving me these reminders today. And Lord, I offer back my life to you. I surrender everything to your care. Father, forgive me for those times where I am so afraid to get out from my comfort zone. Forgive me from the times where I become rebellion, rebellious upon your will, upon my life. And Lord, starting today, I acknowledge you are my Lord, you are my Savior, you are my King, you are my friend. So Father, have your way in my life. Just like the prayer of Jesus, I want your will and not my will be done in my life. Lord Jesus, take over now at the driver's seat. And Holy Spirit, empower and enable me to walk with Jesus that I may continue to be victorious. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this beautiful message of yours. Thank you for the joy and thank you for the heart, for the learning, O oh Lord. And Lord, have your way now as we dig upon it, as we have our D groups, as we continue to walk together as a missional community. Lord, let your blessing and let your presence be upon us all. Thank you, O oh God. We love you. This is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. A blessed day, everyone, and may you continue to shine and be a light to everyone. And I pray that the blessing of the Lord of peace, freedom, and miracles be upon us all. God bless. Stay safe and stay strong always. Hi, brothers and sisters. For our tithes and offering, you can scan the QR code on the screen or you may contact our finance officer, Ms. Eve Lucero, through 099 5080-1107 Let us now have a short reflection for our tithes and offering entitled Choosing the Right Bank which is taken from 2 Peter 3 verse 11 Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What a profound thought! Everything we can see and touch, everything that is a point of reference or that has furnished us with our life experiences is to be dissolved. They will one day pass through existence. This is not intended to be a morbid or depressing thought. It is intended as a warning, a caution, toward preparation. Everything that looks so permanent is really very temporary and will be removed within the will and timing of God. If all of this is true and we believe it is, we should ask ourselves as honest Christians, in which reality am I investing my time talents and treasures in this temporary reality or in the eternal reality to come which do i really believe is the most important if we accept the truth revealed in the bible that is temporary reality will pass from existence then we will want to invest in the bank of eternity regular deposits can be made in this eternal bank. Branch offices are located everywhere. They are called the local church. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us give as those who realize that the divine bankruptcy notice has already been served on the banks and financial institutions of this temporary reality. Let us have a prayer. Let us bow down our heads. Lord Father, thank you so much, Lord, for guiding us and prompting us, O Lord Holy Spirit, in all that we do in our life. Thank you, Lord, for being our healer, our wonderful counselor, our Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us e even in our fi 
our financial matters, O Lord, Father God. O Lord, we pray, Lord, that everything that is to be given will be given, O Lord, Father God, with a heart that seeks you, with a heart, O Lord, Father God, that loves you. And the intention, O Lord, Father God, is for your kingdom in Jesus' name. Lord, bless my brothers and sisters every day of their lives as they continue in a walk with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.